What's up, yo? Welcome back to the channel, Better Call Saul. Better call him. Season two, episode three. This one is called Amarillo. I guess we're going to Texas, y'all. I guess so. Unless there's some other meaning to the word that I'm not familiar with. I'm sure it stands for something. Yes. But I'm just going to assume that we're going to Texas. Yeah. As I make an attempt for a southern draw in my in my my words. No, no, <laughs> no. Effort. Don't be trying to take my shit. Good effort. No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Fine. Um, that was the worst. <laughs> come southern. On, come on, y'all. Heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, you know, coming off of last episode, I, I came to the realization that, not even talking about Breaking Bad, but Better Call Saul, Jimmy McGill, he has provided us with some spectacular, life-changing, amazing things that are going to, like, I'm going to use them in my day-to-day -day life, and I'm probably going to, like, succeed and thrive and be really great. You know, he introduced us to the Chicago sunroof and the squat cobbler. If you use either of those in your day-to-day -day life, we have a problem. There's Work. A big promotion big coming. Problem. Let's go. <laughs> but seriously, should we have another life lessons with Nikki? You know? Those two things alone are just so spectacular. The stories that go with them, obviously one's real, one's not, but like... I mean, he took it, he still... I mean, he did it. <laughs> he invented it to get a client off of a case and to get out of some bad trouble. Spectacular. But they I mean, still had to provide evidence. Exactly. They made the video. They yeah. did it. Which so it apparently, happened. Which apparently exists, which we have not watched that yet on YouTube, but I, I guess it's out there. I think I want to. But leading that, that's a perfect segue right into Jimmy and his situation from last episode. You know, he he did the did the favor for Mike to get the, the friggin' dummy out of getting himself into a lot more trouble than probably what he needed to get himself into mm -hmm. because he wanted his baseball cards back. Dude, this fucking guy. you're a criminal. It doesn't work that way. And the way you staged whatever you staged, the cops saw right through it. Yeah. So Mike, you dumb dumb. First off, got the dude cleared with Nacho, which, again, I You're said. You're a uh, one yeah. lucky motherfucker. <laughs> to have that guy on your side, 100%. I said it last episode, but I want a whole episode dedicated to just Mike's prep, him just learning and figuring out everything going into a situation. Yeah, I want to yeah. see how he gathers the information. Who does he talk to? How, like, how does he go about it? Because. He is prepared. He knows everything. He is prepared to the max anytime he's going into a situation. And I just, like, every time we see Mike, it just turns it up a notch. And he just keeps rising up that list of amazing characters on TV shows that we've watched. I love him. I think he's amazing. But, you know, Jimmy did a favor for him. A pro bono case, which, you know, looks like it potentially could get him into some trouble. Yeah, I'm, I'm really upset Kim. I mean, because we don't know how he gets from point A to point B. Right. So is this the destruction that causes him? I don't know. Like, I was thinking about what it. What's with yeah. this opening, by the way? Everything's like... Ooh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be the the thing that kind of pushes him out of like a, true, a official, legit law. But it's going to be something along these lines. Like He just can't help himself from doing something that he's not supposed to do. And he just didn't understand that, like, fabricating evidence and making up the story and shooting the video to get a client off is a horrible thing to do when you're a lawyer. I'm like, maybe it's because you... He went to, he went to, he went to that school. I don't um, know. But, yeah, like, I, I don't know if that's going to be the one if someone finds out or figures out what he did. But it's going to be along those lines. Yeah. It's going to be something that he's going to violate what he's doing wherever he is. If he stays where he is now for a little while and works on this case. Or if they find out right away and they're just like, dude, you can't do that. Get the fuck out of here. Well, I'm just worried that, like, Price is going to come back and be like, uh, yeah, Mr. McGill, I need your help again. And like, but he, what, what if he, like, shows, again? what if he shows up to his office? Right? That's what I'm thinking, like. 
This motherfucker. Yeah, that, that situation, like, as soon as he walked through the door of the interrogation room, I was like, uh, that, you're with, like, a legit firm now, like, officially working for them? That's not good. So, yeah, I don't know where that's going to go. It might just disappear and the new thing pops up. I don't know. But, yeah, he's he's definitely going to get himself into trouble. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to lose his ability to do, like, legit law. But speaking of law, his brother, Chuck, he's struggling. Yeah. He had a really, really weird reaction to finding out about Jimmy and his new job. You, your, your first initial reaction was like, is he going to die? Like, well, that's what is he going to have a heart attack from like all of this? Gonna, yeah, it felt like he was like internalizing it way too fucking much. I mean, he clearly was. And he... You just gotta let it out, man. Let it go, Elsa. Yeah. I mean, and he pushed through. He forced himself to show up to the office, I think, just to make a point. Yes. And, you know, Kim being there to help him, like she always is there, got Jimmy through the presentation that he was giving because he initially got a little nervous and got a little tripped up having his big bro show up. So yeah, yeah. that's a she really... She held his hand, basically. She does... I don't, I, again, like... Who knows where Jimmy would be in this moment without her at this point? Like, well, she's been there. What the fuck does he do to her that she is not in the yeah other shows? I wonder. Show. I wonder if that is going to be part of what leads to his ultimate, you know, shift. Mm -hmm. If it's he does another thing and she's like, stay the fuck away from me. You are toxic and bad and like I think it's going to be something wild along those lines. Like that's what it, at least that's what I hope they're building to because that's what my expectations are, you know. These writers, the show creators are like phenomenal. So yes. Do you have any other thoughts before we jump into this episode? No. All right. It's showtime, folks. <laughs> that's come true. And when you look there you go. at me, Texas, <laughs> he is all decked out. Wow. Is that an armadillo <laughs> on his bolo tie? Trust your face. I'll be harassed in the comments later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the hiccup, folks. It won't be long. Is that Van C. Sandpiper on it? I think it is. You got five minutes. So he's on official Sandpiper business right now? I guess. Howdy, folks. Alma May Urbano. Is he gonna get in trouble for this? Hello, dear. My name's Jimmy. I tried to visit you at Sandpiper, but they wouldn't allow me to. I saw your bus broken down. Here you are. Lucky me. <laughs> Now, Alma May, do you recall responding to a mailer from my law firm, Davis and Maine of Santa Fe, New Mexico? We were looking to help any Sandpiper residents who may have been overcharged. Was it yellow? It's canary yellow. Nobody took anybody's money uh, exactly. Let's say you're out on a date with your boyfriend. You do have a boyfriend, right? <laughs> Come on. Do you have a nephew? Y yes, Steve. Okay, Steve, is he a good guy? <laughs> Very good. So let's say you and Steve go out to dinner at Birdie's. Here comes the check. 24 bucks for a side of buttermilk biscuits? That doesn't sound right now, does it? It sounds like something got added up wrong. Well, naturally, you send your nephew Steve to talk to the manager, and naturally, the manager corrects the mistake. Well, same kind of thing as what happened at Sandpiper Crossing. And nothing makes me sadder than to see people of the greatest generation. He's so good. I know that the good people at Sandpiper want to make this right. Well, sometimes it's just easier if you get your nephew Steve to go take care of it for you. Georgiana? Hey there, Georgie girl. Thank you. Oh, wow. it's all there. Everything I need. Thank you so much. Old people life. love them. Thank you, Henry. All right. Wow. Beautiful penmanship, a lost art. <laughs> wow. I, I mean. <laughs> Seriously. Get a job, like, buddy. The dude's unbelievable. Yeah, he goes, he goes the extra mile. <laughs> Literally, on a bus. Extra mile. How about we move on to client outreach? I'm going to save you from having to brag. 
Over 200 new Sandpiper clients signed over the past three weeks. Well done, Jimmy. Right now, we're in the process of mapping out the entire Southwest. My goal, another 200 by the end of the month. Get it, Jimmy. Really astonishing results, Jimmy. Incredible. How many people out there actually responded to our direct mailer? One. You got 24 new clients from this one response? Why would you fuck this up, Chuck? The opposing counsel, for example, see this differential and conclude that there may have been some solicitation involved. I did not solicit. I'm just wondering how you account for your success, because it will definitely raise eyebrows over at Schweikert and Coakley. Chuck, I'm sure that... Well, Jimmy? If you could clear this up, that would be helpful. I went to Amarillo to confer with a client and to make sure that we had a solid, good-faith basis for our case there overall. They heard the scuttlebutt before I crossed state lines, and I certainly didn't have to go knocking on any doors. And is it any surprise that they lying. The guy who was there to... With all that in mind, I should have done better. Makes sense. Howard? Chuck? He doesn't buy it because he's a fucking asshole. I mean, I get it. Because he knows his brother didn't do the right thing in terms of getting those new clients. I know. But still, like, handle it, handle it better. It makes sense to designate someone to handle the scheduling. What I'm proposing is that we create a small team at DNM that uh -oh. specific. We'll loop NHHM on Yikes. anything. Uh, Brian, anything. I'm sorry. Excuse me for interrupting. I take Chuck's point. I do. There can't even be a hint of solicitation. So I'm going to pull back. I'll find another way to proceed. You know, client outreach is your department. I'm worried. What happened in Texas? I did my job. You didn't do a song and dance in the day room for the old timers? No. Not, not in the day room. Jimmy, you know solicitation can get you disbarred. This matters. 24 senior citizens now have representation. Before I went, they didn't even know they were getting ripped off. Now they have us in their corner. How is that not a win? I need you to understand something very critical here. I put myself on the line to get you this job. So what, you threw me a bone? No, asshole. You know I believe in you. But then I made my beliefs known to them. And now everything you do reflects back on me. Shit. It's my word. It's my judgment. I think I see where this you is going. You and I both know you can do this job, but please, you just have to do it right. Not good. Not a good situation for the two of them. You want to make sure you put in the batteries the right way, and you close them up. I think you're good to go, young lady. <laughs> 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 that was the pig from the from the door. Mm -hmm. Last two nights I heard gunshots. Last night, there's no mistaking it. There was three of them. They were quick. Pop, 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 closer. It was like they were right outside the house. I'm staying here tonight. No, Mike, no. That's not no, necessary. Mike, it is not a problem. I'll take the couch. Mike, please don't make me sorry I told you. I wouldn't, I would want him to stay. What's the problem with him staying the night and just making sure y'all are safe? Right? I, I just, I don't think she wants to, to feel like a burden to, on him. Or there's something else going on with her. I don't know about that. It's uh, Sandpiper mailers. Yeah, we should be getting responses of like 12 to 15 percent, but we're getting ones and twos. In Colorado Springs, zero. I'm thinking it's the staff. They're tossing the mailers before they can reach the residents, which would be actionable as hell. If we could prove it, big if. Guess you better think of another way. I think I got it. TV commercial. We ran a commercial a few years back, another class action case. And it's not exactly my go-to, but generally speaking, I'm open to it. We will talk next week. Did he already do it? Shit. He did, huh? Oh, this is if the first one. If you or a family one. member have been diagnosed with mesothelioma or related conditions, you may be entitled to monetary damages. <laughs> we still see those hats. Remember, they worked real hard to get that just right. To get what just right? Uh, the, the swirl. They wanted it kind of nebulous, but not 
too <laughs> nebulous. Then there was the issue of the speed. I remember there were. A lot. He's like, let me show you how to do a commercial. Yeah. <sighs> Cliff signed off on this. The partners were very happy. Whatever happened to showmanship? Production meeting. Bring it in. Wait, are they now, using her teamwork? house? I mean, it sure looks that way. We can make something. Dare I say it? We open on Granny, and she is rocking. And then, very slowly and smoothly, the camera uh, moves towards her. Dolly? A dolly. Gotta ask, dude, dolly's extra. It's true. We will improvise, then. OK, it's a Warner. So that's it? Old lady in the chair? It's your commercial. Does anybody like you? <laughs> I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Oh, okay, McGill. Good. I thought they were using her house without her permission. Like, <laughs> shit! Is he parked out front? He's parked out front. Oh, Mike's such a good guy. Is that the newspaper people? There's no way that's what she heard. Newspapers don't make that much noise. I mean, yeah, it's never woken me up before. <laughs> but I guess when you're on high alert. And then he goes to work? Good Lord. He legit does not sleep. At least he didn't this night. <laughs> Ah, that's brutal. Hey, honey, what's happening? What happened? Let me show you. It's right up there. What time did you hear the shots? 2.13 this morning. I looked at the clock. You think maybe it's possible that you dreamed it? I didn't dream it, Mike. Because I didn't sleep a wink last night. I mean, I was here. I was here and you weren't. I believe you. He was there. I believe you. Ready for this? Oh, boy. Here goes. Well, you're 86 years though. old. You're resident of Sandpiper, Colorado Springs. You just finished your afternoon snack. You're watching your favorite TV program. Once again, Jessica Fletcher has to put aside the novel she's been writing and assist law enforcement. Shocker and commercial. My husband and I scrimped and saved for so many years. After Ronald passed, I moved to an assisted living facility. Then one day they said all my money was gone. Where did it all go? You made that? It looks professional. <laughs> and if I were an 86-year-old Sandpiper resident, I'd be dialing. Yes. Up top. I can't believe Davis and Maine went for it. Well, um, I'm in charge of the department. Yeah, but still, you know. Cliff Maine was fine with this. Come on, dude, wait. Just wait the weekend. Show him on Monday. Why is that so hard? Don't, don't do it. Oh shit, what is he gonna do? He's, he's gonna do it, huh? Don't do it. I'd like the number for KKTV channel 11. Omar, what's the cutoff for FedEx? I need to get a package out, too sweet. Can you connect me to your ad sales department? Thanks. Guns look good. No so, ladies in fine fettle. What do you got for me? Bodyguard job, 200 bucks. You want next level pay? You gotta do next level work. That's just how it goes. He looks so tired. You gonna need to crank it up. <sighs> this episode is making me fucking nervous. <laughs> He, he did it already. You're gonna lose your fucking job. This whole case is just gonna be for shit. And Kim's gonna dump your ass. So, everybody knows. They know. Every line starting with 7700 has been rerouted to the bullpen. Oh, so <clears throat> it should be running now, right? I can't believe he didn't get final approval. 
He just wants it to work first and then, cause it's easier to apologize than it is to ask for permission. Not in this position, it's not. No, it's not, it's him <laughs> doing that shit. I feel like it's something that's gonna lead to them losing like leverage on the case. Right? Oh God, it's... Yeah, this is so nerve wracking. This, this to me is cringy. This is cringy to me. Holy shit, did he do too much? <laughs> Is it working? Yes, ma'am. We'll be happy to send an information yes, packet right out. <laughs> Why do I feel like that's bad, though? I don't know. I, oh my god. <laughs> this, this is seriously just extremely nerve wracking. Like, it really is. Something came in this evening, and it's definitely next level pay. Yeah. It's serious money. And the guy, he specifically asked for you. And who's the guy? Nacho? Tuco? Fuck. Freaking out. Seriously, it's so. <laughs> it's the boss. At this hour? Oh, Never too late for congratulations. You ran a commercial. You mm. ran a commercial without ever showing it to me, without first consulting me and my partners. Did you actually think that was going to fly? I was planning on telling you in the morning. You did tell me client outreach was my department. Don't be disingenuous. This commercial, I take it my firm's name is mentioned? Yes. Howard said you were a little eccentric. He didn't tell me you were a goddamn arsonist. There's a very positive headline here. We got 103 phone calls today. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, my office. With the partners, and we want to see this thing. Cliff, when you see this... I knew you. Oh, shit. Yeah, Cliff. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Okay, see ya. Dude, why is he gotta be so dishonest? I'm freaking out. This is so cringy. This gives me anxiety. Seriously. All he has to do is just stay on the straight line. Why? And he'll be so successful. Where the fuck is he? Some place that looks sketchy as hell. Oh no, what is that? It's kind of animal place. It looks like cages, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, those boots look familiar. Feeling cautious? You gonna tell me what we're doing here? Uh-huh. I've got a problem. This problem. Is it a who or a what? There's a guy. I need him to go away. God, that episode. I am freaking out right now. On edge the entire time, just waiting for Jimmy to fuck it up. Gosh darn it. The whole time. Like, this is Chuck's fault. I mean, it's not Chuck's fault. It's Jimmy's fault, but like, fucking Chuck, man. I mean, like you pushed him. The thing is. Chuck's not wrong. That's the fucked up know, part about it. I know. I totally get that. I fuck. He knew. He, dude. He paid a guy driving their bus to have it break down so that he could hop on it and solicit them. That is insanely breaking the rules. The moment you talk to any of those folks, they're like, oh yeah, he came onto our bus and started selling us all this stuff. And immediately he screwed. Yeah, 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 yep. Oh man, and then he ran the damn ad without approval first. I know. It's not. Oh, come on, why? Why? You could have just waited a day. It's not that hard. 
He just can't resist. But he needs to show proof that it works before he asks for permission. Not in this line of work, you don't. I agree. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm on your side, buddy. <laughs> when you're a teenager, then maybe you could play that game with your parents. <laughs> the, uh, I know that it is easier to ask for, you know, forgiveness than it is to ask for you know, permission, but <laughs> at your age, Jimmy, not even the age doesn't matter. There are millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars at stake with this case. Fuck yeah. And <laughs> he's going to screw it up. I can feel it. He's going to screw it all up. Something's going to go wrong. And then Chuck's going to be like, see, told you I so, to... told you so. And then we're never going to see Kim again. And then he's gonna become Saul Goodman. It's all good, oh, man. Oh man, it's not all good, man. It's not. It's fucking hot. Dude, that was. I'm disappointed in you, Jimmy. It was. It was one of those things where the You're whole. You're letting our team down. <laughs> the whole episode, and I'm sure you felt this too. All my heart rate just like was building the That's entire time. That's why it was so cringy. I was for just me. like, "What are you gonna do?" That's why it was so cringy. It's I like, couldn't <laughs> handle. It. Like I couldn't sit still. Like. Has anybody ever watched Meet the Parents? Oh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Where every fucking thing just keeps going fucking wrong. Yeah, yeah. I almost walked out of that movie. Yeah. I couldn't fucking sit there and watch him fuck it up just anymore. I literally, over. I stood up and I was like, fuck, should I just leave yeah. now? sit down and I'm just gonna sit down and it's gonna be fine just we're just gonna get just through this fucking movie him sitting at his desk contemplating what to do it's just like dude handle it don't do it I literally was like oh, I gotta just go walk it. Watch this shit anymore. <laughs> walk it into your boss's office and just show him oh. it's 30 seconds just show him but what if he says no then come up with yeah. something else then it doesn't end your entire case if something goes wrong, don't be the reason why you fail at this case. Ask for help. Oh, man. This is so brutal. It is never bad to ask for help. Not even help. He just needs to ask for approval. Well, no, but like, <laughs> it's, I'm saying like, if that didn't work, ask for fucking oh, help. Ask somebody, ideas. hey, what do you think is a good idea that uh, I should do to get some more clients? Uh, go from there. It's so crazy. It's just like, and I'm all about that. In my line of work, I'm all about doing things without necessarily getting full permission and then being like, hey, look at this. But a million dollars ain't at stake when I do that, let alone 20 or 30 or 40, however much that they're dealing with here. It's just, you can't make those kind of just independent choices. Yeah. Especially when it's someone else's company. Yes. You're not even a partner. No. You're not there yet. You're on a partner track. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I assume that it's the road to partnership. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just making assumptions. I'm not a lawyer. Turn this into a GIF. I'm not a lawyer and I don't pretend to be one on television. So who does Nacho want eliminated? I fucking feel like it's Mike. You think you think he hired Mike to eliminate himself? No, I think he hired Mike so that he can fucking kill him right now. I mean, obviously we know better. Spoiler alert. I need a I need a refresher from you breaking bad folks. I can't remember off the top of my head. If you know the answer to this, you can answer it. Do we see Nacho in the other show? I know his name is mentioned, but do we ever physically see him? I want to say no. Let me know, because I'm curious, because my, like, we two... We see the twins, but I... Yes, don't... my immediate, like, the moment that he said that, my immediate thought, my first thought was that he needs to eliminate Tuco. So that he could be more free with his business. But don't you think Tuco would kill Mike? I think Tuco could be the reason why we don't see Nacho if we don't see Nacho in the other show. I don't remember. The other name that came to mind was Gus. 
Yeah. If for some reason that business, because that's that's about like, I don't think I'm trying to do the math in my head in terms of the timeline we're on. I don't think Gus is fully up and running currently. I as like don't the empire. Know. So I like there know. might be some competition there is kind of what I'm thinking. But like those are the two names that popped into my head because obviously those are the ones but that are most familiar with us. But then how does Mike end up working for? I mean that. But Mike's a really good talker, so like it could go from like I'm here to fucking kill you into, um, I'd like to offer you a job. Right. Or, or him doing well with this job. Kind of puts his mind at ease with taking bigger jobs. And then that's where he gets introduced to Gus. Because he's he's turning down all the big jobs. Because right. he doesn't want to do the intense shit. Yeah, he yeah. wants to do the simple stuff. So he I'm want to break some legs. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if like this job goes well or doesn't go well. And it leads to him getting another one for some reason that introduces him to Gus. But yeah, those are the two names that popped into my head. Those are obviously the familiar names. I don't it could be someone that we've never even met before, which is very possible. Or it's that price guy. Or it's... Mr. Warm, Wormold. That dude might be, like, harassing Nacho. Right. <laughs> like, trying to... Please! Uh, buy my drugs again. Yeah, that's very possible. Yeah. Just like, I need money! <laughs> Let's keep doing business over the phone, trying to, like, communicate that shit. Like, yeah, like you... Because he probably would do that. <laughs> he probably would do that, because he is that dumb. He's, like, a smart guy who's dumb. I mean, there's a difference between book smarts and common sense. 100%. Tons of people have book smarts but have no fucking common sense. Yeah, that, that dummy. It is a rare occasion when there's fucking both. That dummy does not have any common sense. No, motherfucker. His first drug and no deal. street smarts yeah, either. The first drug deal he makes, he goes and buys a yellow Hummer. Like, come what on. What the fuck? So, yeah. So, those are. What the fuck? <laughs> those are the three names. I think, I think those are all. I think all three of them are. Okay. Our yeah, solid plays. I, I, I I'd actually you. move him. Actually, now that you say that, I think I'd put him at the top of the list. Right. At this point. I just, I, 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 but then I also feel like Nacho called him there because he wanted to fucking kill Mike. I mean. For, for doing that thing. But then I also kind of feel like Nacho might respect him for how he handled the previous situation. I for sure think that there was a level of respect there because he, Mike handled it really well. Like, he could have been a total asshole about it and be like, oh, I know where your dad works. Oh, yeah, I'm going to use that as your leverage. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he did. He, he played the, the Tuco card, yeah. which is why Tuco was the first name I thought of, is if he could eliminate that carrot and be like, oh, you get rid of, you get rid of Tuco, I don't have to report to anybody anymore. I could go out on business by myself. It's, he seems like that type of entrepreneur want to go do things on his own and not have to report to somebody. Go go do your own business. He seems like that. So yeah, Tuco, baseball card dummy, and then I just threw Gus out there because I'm just anticipating us meeting him at any moment. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other thoughts? I do not. Do you have emojis? I sure do. So it's all about client outreach. So we're going to go with the bus. I know. I know. <laughs> Fucking Jimmy. <laughs> We're gonna go with a VHS tape. Some of you don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. I see you. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Motherfucker. <laughs> what v the fuck? No. VHS tape. What it's is? It's a VH. It's what we all use to watch movies on and stuff. Is that? Can I plug it into my Netflix? No. It's a tape that you used to put into the VHS player. It's the big wide thing. Remember you used to stick stuff in it probably as you were a kid? Does it take HDMI? No. Steven will all show it on the screen. This is a VHS tape for all you folks that don't know what a VHS tape is. Now I feel old as fuck. Okay. Okay. Then. <laughs> I hate you. Now I forgot my last emoji. <laughs> oh. A newspaper. Yes. For Mike. This fucking guy. <sighs> A bus, <laughs> a VHS tape, and a newspaper. There you go, everybody. There are the emojis for this insanely cringy and just uh, episode. That, that's the perfect... Uh, Can anybody tell how bad my sunburn is? Uh, ah! And my uh, hair color. Anyone? All right. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Leave them in the comments below. Leave all of it. Emojis, Nikki's burn, and hair. 
Talk about it all in the comments. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.